cooling system on the RV12, uh, very simple. You just have a radiator that's on the bottom of the plane. You can buy some mounts that we sell on our shopping cart. Once we get the cowling off, we'll look at the forward mounts. I would do those first because <clears throat> that, that dictates exactly where the rear mounts will go. I actually did it the opposite way and regretted it. But the rear mounts are uh, uh, right here. And uh, inside the plane, I made a little hole so I could get to the, the hardware up in there. But these are little rubber mounts. They make the whole thing kind of hang there nice and, nice and even. And um, you have to use a hole saw to cut out and then put four rivets in it. The uh, back of the radiator, just ordered in some 16th inch by two and a half inch tall uh, aluminum strips from McMaster. Did the same thing on the front. And uh, actually got a little bit of a real thin angle uh, up in here too and didn't use a lot of rivets basically had uh, two rivets holding it to the airplane just so we don't drill a bunch of holes in the airplane and uh, you know they're number five rivets so they're pretty strong rivets but all they do is close the air gap here so that the air stays inside the radiator of course they they kind of slide on the side so that the radiator can still bounce a little bit in the mounts and have the cushioning that it should have in the back ran the uh, piece of aluminum kind of behind here but made it a little shorter so it doesn't rub down actually you can see a little hole underneath there so it doesn't rub down on the fins of the radiator because we don't want to make a hole in anything uh, these mounts are available from viking the threaded rods uh, the radiator can be tapped uh, quarter 28 just be careful when you get you know it's just plastic so when it stops, it stops. Don't, don't make a hole in the radiator. Okay, here's the engine compartment of the RV-12. Let's take a look at the individual components as far as how to install them. Um, we just threw a, a grommet into the hole where the RV-12 throttle is supposed to come through. And then we ended up, we actually ended up just going kind of underneath the manifold here and um, came out along the starter. This stuff chafes really bad, so you know, tie it to something here and there. But for instance, you wouldn't want it to rub on this, you'd make a hole. So just doesn't have to be, you know, uh, really secure, but it, you know, a little tie here and there just so it stays where you want it to stay. In fact, we'll put one here. And then here is the uh, clip for all Viking engines. It goes here. Uh, I would put a washer in between the clip and the mount. Otherwise, this gets crushed too much. Make sure that when you put the throttle cable in, the little dimple here actually goes into the groove in the cable super critical so it doesn't slip and come out um, this can be bent just a tiny bit this way that makes the cable line up better with here uh, this gets into the fourth hole one two three four there's a nut underneath don't over tighten it because it'll snap you don't want that here's your idle set screw here Make sure the plastic has been ground back a little bit underneath here so it doesn't hit that. And that's the adjustment for it, for the idle. So that's your throttle cable. The muffler, you just slide it on in the slip fit up here. <clears throat> and then put your uh, hanger for it in place down there. And uh, just drill a hole, quarter inch hole centered to the engine mount where that ends up when the muffler is level. There's also going to be another hanger for this up here and it's going to be mounted to this uh, stud and the other stud right there that's a part in the making right now but that'll be coming across like this and it'll pick up this hanger and it will have another attach point for the muffler wire harness uh, ECU comes through here and uh, we plug them in these are weather tight high temperature connectors we tough cell wire make sure you strain relieve the harness real good so it's supported. Uh, use one of the nylon pass-throughs and uh, put all your other cables like the power to the ECU and things like that. There's not much really that needs to be hooked up to get the Viking engine to run. And uh, that's really it to, you know, for what you need to hook up to get it running electrically. Uh, we've got an NPG coolant bottle, it mounts to the firewall and has a uh, hose going here and basically goes into that fitting right there and um, what I do to uh, get the coolant in initially so it doesn't take that long 
since these are just spring clamps, so I just I just pop this open. You can even pop this one open, put a funnel in there, fill fill most of it real quick. Put a rag underneath so you don't spill anything, and then close this up, and then just put uh, coolant in there, and then heat up the engine and shut it down a few times, and it'll it'll push uh, air out and draw coolant in each time you do that. There's another bottle right here, and that's for um, uh, gearbox oil. Only use Mobile One 75W90 because that's the only one we know for sure that we've tested that won't foam. Uh, it also has a, a swivel fitting underneath the bottle and a high temperature clear tube. Same thing, it runs out here and then goes down to the gearbox fitting down there. And that's to vent uh, pressure in the gearbox as you heat as it heats up and um, draw the fluid back in as it cools down. Here's a little bit more about uh, mounting it. As you can see the engine mount goes to the original locations right there. We've got the uh, coolant tube coming. We'll discuss that in a second but it's going across there as well. Um, so we got the 3H bolt there and then uh, we have a 3H bolt here coming down through and we had to grind one washer there a little bit because it's kind of half sitting on the airplane and half sitting on the powder coated piece but pretty easy to do. The uh, radiator is the reason I said before to mount this first. Uh, this is just some uh, 16th inch channel from a master car and you just get a couple pieces of that buy a foot of it and um, that's in order to be able to mount these ahead of the firewall. So you just rivet this to you know bottom of the airplane, four rivets or so, and then you rivet the mounts to here, and then you line this up, and, you know, put something underneath the radiator, hold it all in place while you're working, and that lines up the um, the radiator mounts in the front. These, by the way, are quick disconnects. Uh, so as you're working, you can you can push this these wires back here. And then this pops right out. It's got an O-ring inside, so it makes it easier to work. So that's basically the, the radiator mounting. Uh, and the engine mount was there. Now let's look at the engine mount, just kind of like finalize that. Because we also have to put the rubber bushings in here. And then a large area washer on each side. And uh, AN6 bolt and a lock nut. And then we do the same over here. And the same in the corner. So we've got quite a few mounting bolts makes it nice and strong. The, uh, of course, level the whole engine and uh, you know, with the laundry on there, you can do that. As you can see, we put a few washers in here just to get the engine down a little bit in the front from where the engine mount was welded. The um, cooling system, you're going to be coming out of your thermostat housing, 135 degree elbow, a little piece of aluminum tubing barbed, and then a 90. And then we're going to go behind the engine, but right on top of the engine mount. And that is the, well, one side of the radiator, basically, because we're just coming across the top there. And then we make another 90, and we're going right into the radiator on this side. Now, the other side is the hot side, basically. That's the flow to the radiator, so it's coming out of the cylinder head up here. And... Uh, we put a 90 on that. Um, the 90s come with longer legs, so you just shorten them down a little bit. And then a downspout pipe, and then a, a 45, and another 45, and then a 90 going into the radiator. By the way, this is the only place where the clamps are bigger. These are smaller, and you do have to kind of expand this to get it on here, a little bit of o-ring grease. I actually took this piece and just pushed it for a while onto the chuck of my handheld drill because it's cone-shaped and that expanded it enough that I could push it on. And it's easier to do with this fitting off the radiator, which is easy to do. Put it on the table and then reinstall these, but make sure you install it in the right orientation because these are indexed, as you can see. When you put them down, they have a little index groove. Um, yeah, we supported it right here. You might want to support it maybe one more spot, uh, depending on where your cowling is. The uh, heater, if you ever want to put one in, is put into this hose here. And also you would attach the other end of a heater to this, uh, actually it's tapped in here, so you can take that out and just put a fitting in there, a 45 or a 90 or, or a straight, whatever works for you. 
Uh, need, a little, need a little hose on here. This is the breather for the crankcase. Uh, hose goes down to this area, put a clamp here, and then blow it right on the exhaust. And if there's anything that ever came out, it would catch it and uh, just evaporate on the hot exhaust. Propeller, whirlwind propeller. Uh, basically, you have to you know, set it to about 20 degrees using their protractor that slides onto the, the blade and then a smart level or a, or a protractor. We have videos about how to do the propeller, so that's a separate thing altogether. Okay, once you get it all mounted and the cowling and everything done, leave the prop off. Um, put uh, five quarts of uh, zero uh, 20 oil in the engine, as the cap says, and then uh, put uh, eight ounces of gear oil into the gearbox and uh, rotate things around a little bit and then for the first start like I said leave the prop off I'm going to turn a battery on or a bolt battery maybe uh, make sure it's at idle and then start the engine 